So what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that I believe the name of my message for Resurrection Sunday is going to be, we is risen. We Hallelujah. is risen. You see my shirt I got on, or is it back? Love the hell out of you. Amen. And you know, I mean, you know, people don't realize <laughs> that word hell is hadas. Right. Means hey, to not see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Jesus right. said, I came that you may have life, that you may see, to open the eyes of the blind. Yes. Oh, man, you know what? I could just sit here and just think about <laughs> the wonderful God. You mean, you mean, isn't it, Jesus and Sam, I'm going to love the punishment of the Father out of you? Hello. Oh, that's wrong. My goodness. Oops. <laughs> you know? I'm telling you something. Life is so good. Life is so good in Christ. Yes, and sir. you know, it's so funny because I saw something uh, that I saw from years ago where I said, life is so good. And somebody said, you mean in the Holy Ghost? I'm yes. like, hello, there ain't no life except in the Holy Ghost. That's right. No life apart from Christ. Right. Oh my goodness. I and mean, see, that's you know, what that's what I was actually thinking about this morning. Of course, every day we wake up, we think of resurrection life now. Yeah. You know, every day is resurrection life, yeah. but you know, either you are identifying with the life of this world or the flesh, or you're identifying with your life in Christ. And there, there is no life apart from Christ. There's nothing it's either anything. life or death, you know. That's right. That's one right. Or the other. That's one right. Or the other. One or the other. I'm telling you, this life is so wonderful. You know, it's so funny because people that are still, they think that they're in grace, mm -hmm. but there's, there's, they still have a legalistic mindset. Yeah. They won't dare say anything good without saying, you mean Jesus or in Jesus, or in Christ. Or in <laughs> it's like they're so afraid yeah. of taking away the glory from the Lord. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said that he has given us his glory. <laughs> we are the glory of God. Hallelujah. You yeah. know? And what, were you, what were you saying this morning? You were saying that. How about that it's, well... We're, we're saying we're one in the, I mean, we're in union with okay. him, you know, yeah. it's one in the same. It's not a different glory. No. no. And it's no. not a different spirit or a different love. And it's you know what the legalist will say? You know what the legalist will say? They'll quote the scripture. God will not give his glory to another. Well, you know what that word other is? Stranger. Amen. We're not strangers, baby. We're a part of the family of God. Amen. We're included in the family. Yeah. And what is God's glory anyway? Amen. It's all the Lord. It's all you? God. It's all God. It's all God. From Amen. beginning to end and everything in the middle. The We're author. in. We're in, not out. Exactly. <laughs> He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Of faith, not our faith. Our, of faith. Of faith, because the uh, faith. King James put R in there. Oh, yeah. The faith. The it's faith. The, faith. the faith of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. The faith has you know, been persuading my heart as he is, so am I in this life, in this world. Yes. You know? right. mm -hmm. And it's we I'm not waiting, it. it's I'm already is. It's uh it's yeah. we, we is risen. That's <laughs> it. We is. The problem is you want to know don't... something? You know, sometimes I mean it's amazing how. The Holy Ghost connects the dots because I have I have preached so many times like about Nicodemus and Jesus and how yeah. Jesus said to Nicodemus that no man has ascended up to heaven save the Son of Man that came down from heaven, mm -hmm. even the Son of Man who is in heaven. Jesus is talking about his heavenly state as he's talking to Nicodemus, okay? 
This heaven is union. It's union. He yeah. was in union with the father. And he's saying, okay, mm -hmm. you can't get it now because you're on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go. And then if you can pick it up right in, in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you mm -hmm. that where I am, so, ye shall be also. Okay? Right. And then I saw... I, I was just meditating on it the other day. It hits me. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Da mm -hmm. da da da. He did it. He did it. <laughs> so now you can't say, no man has ascended up to heaven, save he the Son of Man who is in heaven, even Jesus Christ. No, we are in heaven, we are his body. He is seated up there and we are in him. That's right. That help is us so awesome. Yeah, help us to see that. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Yes. And really the blinders, the blinders come off as we continue to acknowledge what is already is true. Yes. Yeah. What is? We begin to see that the, the light of the, the glorious light of the gospel, you know, yeah. uh, helps us to see what God sees. And that is, as he is, so are we. I mean, there is no difference, you know, yeah. and uh, we see, we see God really in the, in the, the father even in the face of Jesus. Yes. Right? So yes. there's not a distortion. It's not yes. like, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, so many Christians because of blindness, because they don't see, ident because I identify more with the flesh and the world than with Christ, there's a yes. blindness over their hearts about yes. even to who God the Father is. And so they see God as the, the angry guy, you yes. know, and Jesus, the nice guy, the nice guy came to deliver us from the angry guy, you know, which mm -hmm. is which is really total darkness and blindness. But yes. it helps us to see the gospel, the glorious light of the gospel opens our eyes and understanding to help us to see not only who God is in the face of Jesus, but helps us to see who we are in the eyes of our father. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's you know, just. I was, um, I don't think I shared it last week. I think I shared it in the video that um, I shared on the way to church. Mm -hmm. that I really got a great revelation last week. And um, I have shared with you before the first part, which I already knew. It's the second part I didn't know. Where. Um, Jesus is the sun, we're the moon. Mm -hmm. And the, as the physical moon has no light of its own, it only has the ability to reflect light. Albedo okay? light. It's albedo light. Okay. But if there is a partial eclipse, if the earth partially goes between the sun and the moon, then there's a partial darkness. If, the moon if there's a total eclipse, then there's full darkness, okay? And it's so funny because I shared this and then yesterday I was listening to Phelan and he was talking about his mother, how it's something to the effect her plant should have had wheels because she was constantly moving them <laughs> because she knew how the plant needed the light of the sun. Yeah. And there are some plants that if they don't get full sun, they will not produce, they will not bloom good, mm. you know? And he was giving the same example. Mm. And he said the greatest mm. shade that can be thrown on a Christian's life is law. Mm. Mm. Because that you're living in the shadow of your own, uh, your old identity rather than in the glorious liberty of a child of God, yeah. okay? Allowing yeah. God's, um, the son of righteousness right. to shine and so, light you up. And bring the healing. Yeah. yeah. So, and you know, in Matthew 13, it tells about those 
uh, the seed that is sown in that place where I think it's, I forget which one it is, stony places, but it's where the cares of this world mm -hmm. choke the world. So mm -hmm. there you're allowing something to come. If you're worried about circumstances, you allow something to eclipse the glory of Jesus Christ in your life. Okay, you've dwarfed him. Okay, and so it's not a good place to be. But last week, I saw how the light of Jesus Christ can eclipse the darkness. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've never seen that before, yeah. but it's where we're going. It's this life of um, all hell's breaking loose around you, okay? And it's pressing in on you. But then the glory of Christ appears and it obliterates the darkness, okay? And um, Paul, Paul, he said this, and I love it because I know what I've been saying was true, but I wasn't hearing anybody say it. And, you know, sometimes you feel like the Lone Ranger, you know, and then, yeah, yeah. The lies come, oh, you're screwed up. You don't know what you're talking about. But I've been hearing Malcolm say the same thing. When it talks about the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not talking about the sweet by and by. It's talking about when the glory of Christ rests upon you and he appears to you. That obliterates everything. Listen, if you see Jesus, nothing else matters. I don't care what's coming at you. I don't care how big, bad, and ugly it may be. If Jesus shows up in your vision, he obliterates everything else. Yeah. He's all consuming, okay? And when Paul said this, he said, uh, in verse 18 of Romans 8, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time now, you know what Paul went through. Mm. I don't know if us have gone through anything like Paul went through. Mm. He, he says they're not even worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That glory is revealed every time we are in a tight place mm. where we're weak mm. and, the, and he's strong. Yes. And it's like, Paul knew this. He experienced this. Mm. Whereby he said, I take pleasure. Mm. I mean, I get into it, man. <laughs> I get into it. These, the, these infirmities and these weaknesses. Oh, what? Are you a sadist or something? <laughs> no. He experienced the very present help of the savior mm. he loved to be saved mm. well unless you're in a place where you need saved you're not gonna get saved you know what i mean and when i say saved i'm not talking about eternal salvation i'm talking about being saved in the moment delivered from the lie exactly mm -hmm. praise god and you know I was reading before we came on, I was reading in Ephesians 4, and I, I, I want to read it in the mirror. Boy, I tell you, I got to tell you something, brother. I have been reading the mirror a lot more because it's juicy. Hey, before you go to that, I had a thought on yeah. when you talk about the, the plant and moving the plant to the light yeah. so the, the plant can grow, you know. Yeah. And all these things and and how the law is uh you know it really our perspective it the, the bible says the law was spiritual but we were carnal sold That's under right. sin so really it's, it was our carnal perspective of the law yeah which which is you know the the carnal man's always looking to the flesh for justification of life what what i can do to um to have life by the flesh 
But um, when you were talking about that, I opened up to scripture right to Paul's, uh, Saul's encounter with Jesus. Okay. And he was under the law, dark, and he, he was under that full eclipse, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and he was dark and his mind was darkened. Okay. And he thought he was doing God a favor by killing yeah. Christians, you know? <laughs> But he has this encounter with the light. You know, I opened it up when you were talking right to this. And I said, well, maybe the Lord wants me to say something here. It says in uh, Acts 9, 3, it says, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like you were saying the light dispels, obliterates the, the darkness. When you flip a light on, the darkness goes, mm -hmm. you know. And so Jesus, you know, he shows up in the light, you know, and this light sh shines around him, Saul, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Is it hard for you to kick against the goad? So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? <laughs> but anyway, you know, I just thought it, that's interesting about the plant and the light and how that, you know, the Lord, he comes with this light to dispel the darkness. That's why if we talked about Sunday, his eyes were as uh, flames of fire, you yeah. know, he comes, he comes in this glorious light, not to, dis, not to destroy people, but to destroy wrong belief systems that keep people bound in darkness from that seeing. Fire. That fire is his love. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it's the fire of his love. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to share that before you went That's, on. Amen. That's well, I want to read um, in, you know, we know it in Ephesians 4, 17, talks about don't walk in the vanity of your mind like other Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He says, my most urgent appeal to you in the Lord is this. You have nothing in common with the folly of the empty-minded masses. The days of conducting your lives and affairs in a meaningless way are over. Mm. The life of your design seems foreign to them because their minds are darkened through a hardened heart ruled mm. by mm. ignorance. They are blinded by the illusion of the senses mm -hmm. in their only, as their only reference, stubbornly wearing a blindfold in broad daylight. Yeah. Oh boy, the light has come. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hardness of heart is the result of a darkened understanding, Absolutely. a mind veiled through unbelief. Yes. Having become conditioned to a life distant from God, they're alienated from the life of God, the Zoe life. Mm. They haven't got a clue what the Zoe life is. Right. Because they, be, having become conditioned to a life distant from God, they are calloused in spirit. And are lost and greed driven, they have completely abandoned themselves to outrageous, shameless living. You know, nothing in the system that the, the inner court, the holy of holy place, was designed by its creator to be filled with the presence of God. Yeah. This is our satisfaction. This is our contentment. Mm -hmm. But if you do not have the creator filling the creature, then you are like a man with hollow legs, which just keeps pouring in, pouring in, and is never satisfied. The scripture says in, I think, Proverbs, that the eyes of men and hell are never satisfied. Mm -hmm. never satisfied you can't satisfy it mm -hmm. you know jesus said what has a man gained if he gained the whole world mm -hmm. you know uh julianne of norwich said that man if he gained the whole world 
he would say, me wanteth still. Mm. Yeah. The whole world wouldn't satisfy him no. because the creature cannot satisfy the creature. What oh, if you had a bit what if you had a billion dollars in the bank? Oh no, no, no. I'll tell you too, how many of those billionaires commit suicide? Oh no. Money just can't cut it. So it says, uh, of what total contrast is Christ? That's verse 20. It says, Ye have not so learned Christ. Notice it doesn't say you have not so learned about Christ. Mm -hmm. Eternal life is not learning about. It's intimate union. It's learning through an experiential knowledge. It said, listen to this. This is where it gets good. Truth is defined in Jesus. Yes. It is not possible to study him in any other context. Mm -hmm. He is the incarnation. Hear him resonate within you. Learn him through him resonating in you. Experience his life as he does it in you. You're coming to know the life through experiencing Christ doing the life in you. Well, what about what, what about people that say, I'm just trying to be like Jesus? <laughs> you can't imitate God. Mm -hmm. I mean, go for it. Try. You'll weigh yourself out. And I'm throwing this out for a reason because that's where a lot of people think, you know, what we we're trying our best to be like Jesus instead of understanding as he is, so are we. Yeah. Right. Stop and think about it. Let's just let's just sit there for a second. I just want to be like Jesus. Jesus was God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can anyone live like God apart from receiving the divine nature, which is the very spirit of God, who's going to live the life in you? Like Paul said, Paul said, I was crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes. Yet it's not I. But it's Christ now living in me. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's Christ living the Christ life. It's not mm -hmm. us trying to imitate him. It's to let loose and say, have your way, Lord. Let Do the your Lord thing. Your life. Well, those who have become joined to the Lord. And who did the joining? He God. did the joining. Have become one spirit with him. That's right. Well, so it's through the union and, and what he did to join us together you know and we're in union with you know we're not separate from and trying to to measure up and trying to be yeah. but, but there's one scripture here in psalm that uh, david says this he says i will because it ties with what you said about satisfaction yeah there's no satisfaction apart yeah. knowing your identity in christ you know and he says i will be satisfied when i wait in your likeness amen See, now we always put that off sometimes as a future thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. he's saying, he's saying when when I'm when I awake to who yeah. to my new reality in yeah. Christ, then yeah. I'll be satisfied. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so uh, in verse 21, it says, Truth is defined in Jesus. It is not possible to study him in any other context. He is the incarnation. He is truth incarnated. Hear him resonate within you. The truth about you has its ultimate reference in Jesus. The truth as it is in Jesus. See John 1, uh, see 1 John 2, 7, 8. Whatever is true of him, is equally true of you. He did not come to introduce a new compromised set of rules. 
He is not an example for us, but of us. Yeah. For in the truth of your union in him, in his death and resurrection, you have stripped off that old identity like yeah. a filthy, worn out garment. Ignorance and lust corrupted you and cheated you into wearing it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, you know, that's put off, put off the old man, mm -hmm. put off the former conversation of the old man. The old man's already been put off, but the lifestyle, the, the remnant that was left over from the former lifestyle. But you know, as I read that, Put off like a filthy garment. Right. It reminded me of um, the scripture. Uh, one psalm, or oh, where is it? The one where it says the heavens. Oh, dear Lord. Let me see if I can find it. 103, was it? 102? Would you kind of liken it to as the grave clothes, like the old grave clothes, except we know Lazarus, he wasn't really raised from the dead. He was well, resuscitated. What I saw, what I saw is individually, mm -hmm. we are waking up yeah. to who we truly are. And we put off like a filthy garment our former lifestyle. Mm. But there's going to be a day. Mm -hmm. See, we're new. Right. We're a brand new creature in Christ, okay? <clears throat> so we put off the old. Individually, that's happening. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a day when... As the scripture says, uh, 10226, Psalm 10226. I'm gonna back up 24. I said, Oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. The years are throughout all generations. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish but thou shall endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shall thou change them and they shall be changed. This is the, the corresponding scriptures, Isaiah 51, 6, 2 Peter 3, 10, uh, Hebrews 12, 27, that in a moment, mm -hmm. everything's going to be changed, okay? And now, I mean, follow me. So individually, we're experiencing this. But there's going to be a day. See, we're a new creature. Mm -hmm. And each person is coming into the revelation of their true self. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be a day, collectively, mm -hmm. that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Now, mm -hmm. look at this. In... Um, Romans 8, verse 19, it says, for the earnest expectation of the mm -hmm. creature mm -hmm. waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Mm -hmm. The creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be, that's future, shall be uh, delivered from the bondage of corruption mm -hmm. into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For mm -hmm. we know the whole creation mm -hmm. groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, We've got the down payment. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption right. to get the redemption of our body. Right. At that time, when we receive our glorified body, 
the whole heavens and the earth are going to be new. That's right. Everything's going to be new. Glory to God. That is so exciting. Yeah, this That's this awesome. uh, earth suit is about wore out. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need a new earth suit. I knew, but you know what? Even even with that, you know, he's put his spirit in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us that gives life to these mortal bodies. Absolutely. He's quicken these mortal bodies. So God is so awesome. He says, hey, I'm not going to leave you without any kind of life. So Timothy talks about, and this is what the Lord has zeroed me on too, was the life that now is and a life to come. Yes. And how about a lot of Christians swing from one extreme to the other? Yes. They either they either just embrace the life that now is and discount the life to come, or they embrace the life to come and discount the life that now is. Mm -hmm. But we have the spirit of life right now in us. Right. Yeah. And we can reign in life in this mortal body and reign in life in this world full of corruption. We can still reign in life, just like we see the early church did. They were reigning in life. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. You know, uh, I was listening to Malcolm, and it really brought it home that eternal life has been portrayed as... Um, you get it when you die. Mm -hmm. Well, hello, I don't need, you know, I don't need this overcoming life when I die. <laughs> there ain't going to be nothing overcome. It's all going to be eternal bliss. I need this package now. Here's the world of adverse circumstances. Yes. So yeah. that I can overcome like Jesus overcome. Hallelujah. Janet, I mean, it's a sweet place. Jump in there, Janet. <laughs> you know, people don't realize if we don't have it now, we're not going to have it then. No, yeah. that's true. You know, we got yeah. it. It's now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a clear statement. The life that now <laughs> is and is to come. He's talking about the life and the immortality of life when these yeah. bodies will be yeah. you know, put off. And we are going to, just like Jesus sits or see Stephen when when Stephen was stoned okay by his accusers he was reigning in life yeah oh yeah and he saw Jesus not a floating spirit no. but the son of man standing at the right hand of the father in flesh and glorified flesh and bone isn't that incredible that the word of God has forever become a human human that's right human. which was his which was his intention all along all along listen the scripture says let's look there in ephesians i don't think a week goes by that i don't read this scripture yeah i was while you're looking there i was thinking about what malcolm said one time you know some things you hear and then then uh, and then suddenly god brings it back and says okay this but Malcolm talks about how, how Jesus wasn't just on a rescue mission and he put on an earthly human suit, you know, like a costume. He yes. put it on. And then when he finished, he he's now, you know, something. No, he became human. The word became flesh. And he was in a body of, of corruption, but now he's in a glorified body. Yes. Of flesh and bone. And as he is, so are we. That's right. Okay. I mean, we have that earnestness of the spirit, okay, right. of this, right. this adoption, the redemption of our body, that hope, right. that confident expectation yeah. that we're not going to have to live with this forever. No. no. We're not going to, you know. No. Praise we're going to oh, with, okay. with immortality of life. So. Yeah. Now, I mean, this wasn't a rescue mission. Jesus coming was not a rescue mission. He always intended to have a human body. That's right. <laughs> You're and upset then, a lot of religious people, right? <laughs> Ephesians says in verse four, according as he has chosen us before the foundation of the world. And that yeah. word foundation is the fall. Mm -hmm. well, he chose us in him before there was ever a fall. That's right. 
that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Mm -hmm. you, how can you be holy and without blame? Not without him. Love. Mm -hmm. Love doesn't see. It covers. You're perfect. Yeah. You know, and I always think of Rebecca. Re yeah. Remember, yeah. Jan? Yeah. When she would act up, yeah. her mother would always say, It's our oh, granddaughter. Yeah. She's just tired. <laughs> <laughs> mother's love huh? yeah she's tired she's tired you know there's yeah. nothing the matter with her she's just tired low on carbs <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you it's beautiful beautiful love makes a way right yeah love covers yeah love covers it covers over it hides it you know yeah. that's what we you know we go back to talking about how that you know it says abraham never wavered you right, know right exactly or J job never accused god exactly yeah because of love we're not seeing it through the lens of love she laughed at what, when god said that she was going to have a child right yeah see you only see well, like how, the way the Lord looks at us now. How does exactly. love look at us now? David was a man after God's own heart. Look at him. He committed adultery and had the husband murdered. Mm -hmm. Yet, in, his, in the Lord's eyes, he's perfect. Right. Remember, he sees us complete in Christ, perfect in Christ, yeah. even in the midst of our, our stupidity. Exactly. Thank God. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, the carnal mind, it can't, it can't, uh, it can identify with that. It thinks you, it's got to uh, judge you according to the flesh. Yes. Right. And the behavior, which I love that. I mean, my mind is just taking so many turns. I guess you can say that my mind, and when it comes to how we're seeing things and judging and Judge no one according to the flesh, you That's know, right. or to external uh, appearance, because you're not judging righteously, That's right. you know, when you do that. It's an unrighteous <laughs> judgment. It's an unrighteous judgment. Yes, absolutely. Judge people according to the flesh, according to the external. Speaking of Abraham, remember when he told Abimelech, that because he was so scared mm -hmm. that Abimelech would kill him if he found out Sarah was his wife. Mm -hmm. He said, just say you're my sister. <laughs> <laughs> so then she he takes her, he's he's jealous. He takes her into his harem. And then <laughs> the Lord <laughs> says, and God said in chapter 20 of Genesis, verse 6, and God said into unto him in a dream. Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me, therefore suffered I not to touch her. In other words, Abimelech had some kind of affliction that stopped him from having Sarah. Mm. Okay. It says, now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. <laughs> he lied to the guy then he's saying restore his wife to him for he's a prophet and he shall pray for thee and thou shalt live and if thou restore her not know thou that thou shalt show it up wow. thou and all that are thine your whole family your whole family and it says in verse 17, so Abraham prayed unto God. It had to have been hard for Abimelech to go and ask Abraham <laughs> to pray for him. It's your fault that all this came upon me. <laughs> you know what's amazing? Yeah. Is that God, God sees us one way and he never changes that. Oh. No. 
He never changes Isn't that. Isn't that wonderful news? That is so, well, once you know it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, we we made up my mind right about now. it. We I don't have God on the it. screen, but we, in the, the night before or before we went to sleep last night, we had an opportunity to know that God sees us. Oh, yeah. Mm. And he knows exactly who we are. Amen. Yeah. That's how he sees us all yeah. the time. And right. so, it says, so Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maidservants, and they bare children. Mm -hmm. For the Lord had closed up the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Mm -hmm. So nobody could bear anything. And then... It says, and the Lord visited Sarah, and she conceived. Mm. Mm. Fruitfulness. Mm. Fruitfulness. Didn't that happen even twice? Yes. Even after that? To Egypt twice. There was, uh, there was... Wasn't it? Wasn't it Jacob did the same thing? No, Abraham. It... Abraham did it twice. Not to the same guy. Not to no. the same guy, but two, two different. Because <laughs> I know two. Jacob did the same thing. <laughs> because it was Jacob and Rebecca. They yeah. were making sport. And the king saw they were playing around, not like brother and sister, but um, mm -hmm. husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first time I saw that, I thought, what? Genesis Where is it? 12 and Genesis 20. Genesis 20? No, oh. chapter 12 and chapter 20. Yeah, 12 and 20. Chapter 12 and 20. Oh, right. chapter 12, the first time was, was Genesis it? chapter Pharaoh, 12. The Pharaoh. And then the second <laughs> time was with the So this yeah. was the second go around. Yeah, <laughs> it was the second one. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah. That's how mm -hmm. that's how Abraham got most of his wealth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're my sister. He says, mm -hmm. just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> she was a half sister or something. Yeah. 15 saw it pharaoh saw her and committed yeah. and so uh and so it's just like so this was a thing that happened between with pharaoh too right mm -hmm. right because pharaoh says well, what have you done to me why did you <laughs> not tell me she was your wife yes so it's just like wow you talk about God's love and how he continues to to see people and work with them you know yeah 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 that's what I wrote this morning it's about I got seeing how on the Mount of Transfiguration and at the baptism of Jesus the father spoke the exact same words this is my son whom I love with him I'm well pleased yeah. you know and yeah. I just feel like that's what God is still speaking over every person in the world, you know, Amen. His children yeah. who he loves and he's well pleased with them and just wants them to come to him as their father. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good father. Now it was Isaac in the 26th chapter of Genesis. Mm. Isaac and his wife did the same thing to Abimelech. Father, like father, like son. Like son. Yeah. It says in verse 6 of 26, And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. Oh, my goodness. For he feared to say she is my wife, lest, right. said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she was so fair to look upon. Mm. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out of a window and saw and beheld Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. 
Mm-hmm. So they were playing hanky panky. Mm-hmm. And Abimelech <laughs> called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety, she is your wife. How said thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this that thou hast done to us? <laughs> One of the people might have lost <clears throat> with thy wife, and thou should have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all the people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. <laughs> he had a remembrance of what the Lord said to him before when he met with Abraham's wife. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Yeah. Well, you yeah. can just see the love of God in the whole thing, you oh, know, yeah. suffering and love and, and God bringing forth his promise, you know, to, yes. bring, to bring forth his promise, the promise. Do, do you know when the children of Israel went into the promised land and they saw themselves as grasshoppers in their mm-hmm. sight, therefore they felt that they were grasshoppers in their mm-hmm. enemy's sight. Do you know that lie was right between their two ears? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the enemy was mm-hmm. afraid of them. Yes, of them. He was. Yeah. And he would have. If God's children could only see what the enemy sees, right. they would be filled with boldness. Faith is required there. Well, you, well, you got to believe what God yeah. believes, you know? Yeah. That's well. like with Elijah and Elisha, you know. That God would open his eyes to see that they that are with us are far more. And we saw oh, a painting yesterday that was amazing, and the whole hillside just full of lights, you know, of the army of God, you know, that was with them it was far yeah. more. Open up our eyes people. to see what you see. Yeah. That's do you it. Re- do you remember? I don't know if I ever told you, I forget who it was, which what missionary, because I read them all. Uh, but this guy was in the bush and uh, with his family in this little cabin. Mm. And they were surrounded by cannibals, mm. you know, and they wanted to come and eat them. <laughs> and mm. uh, so every night they would pray that the Lord would protect them. Mm. Right. And so finally, after several weeks, the head of the tribe came to the missionary and he said, where did this army come from? And the missionary said, what army? Mm. He said, every night when we came to get you, (laughs) your house was surrounded by this great army of giant men. Wow. And he said, these are the angels of the Lord. Well, the whole tribe got saved. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, this is real, man. Yeah. I say that all the time. This this life in Christ is real. You yeah. know? The yeah. name of the Lord. <clears throat> How exciting. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Yeah. <laughs> and the righteous run into it. Yes. Okay. What is the name of the Lord? The name. Stop and think. Name. When I say apple, when I say apple, you I see a red apple, a juicy apple. It tastes good. I see and apple name. pie. <laughs> what? I see apple pie. <laughs> so the name of the Lord represents everything that that name represents right the name of the lord he is faithful he is just he's kind he's loving he's filled with all goodness the name of the lord is a strong tower what do you need i am am. whatever you have need of I think I'm going to run into that place and be saved. <laughs> Same <man>. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I need to run in there many a time a day, my brothers yeah. and sisters. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, like I said, I said, uh, so and 
someone asked Bob, I think at one time, he says, do you believe in the rapture? He says, yeah, I get raptured about eight times a day. Yes. Oh my goodness. Set my mind on things above instead of on things of this earth, you know? Yes. yes. Because that's where our life is. Our life is hid with Christ in God. Yes, absolutely. You know? absolutely. That's where our strength is. I you know? just that. Yeah. God. Remember what Jesus said in John 17? Did you want to say something, Jean? No, you, you got to slow down. They can't hear you. Oh. Say what you said again, but just yeah, say it. I didn't hear you. Okay. Or, okay. I was going to say that very scripture, Colossians 3, is that our life is hid with Christ in God. Yes. Stop and, and let that resonate. Is that your reality? Yes. My life is hid with Christ in God. And you know what? The world can't see that. Mm -mm. The world cannot see your life is hid with Christ in God. It's like I'm living in the kingdom of God right. while I'm living in this world. Yeah. And I can have totally adverse circumstances. Mm -hmm. But my reaction to those adverse circumstances are going to be according to my reality. Yeah. Right. Christ in God. Yeah. And right. so when I act contrary to this world system, people are going to go, what in the world? Why, why aren't you disturbed? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the same when I, when my loved ones go to be with the Lord. I'm not disturbed. Right. They got it made in the shade, man. Yeah. I just got to pray, Lord, please help me not to be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest thing. Yeah. Because... They have eternal life. Yeah. And they've just shifted their location of living. That's all. And but the quality they, of life. Yeah. And come on. I mean, especially when people are suffering and sick and miserable. Mm -hmm. And they are transported from this world to the next. Wow. We should be rejoicing for them. You yeah. know? I mean, I rejoice every time I lose. I, I think it would be hard if you lost somebody that um, was in good health mm -hmm. and in their youth or something like that. That would be harder to deal with. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with people that lived a long life and their, you know, their body's given out on them and they're in misery, mm -hmm. you know, I've got to join in their celebration, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no regrets with the long life and health. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, there's no re regrets. No. When people yeah. live a long life and are healthy because the, even their family looks at them that way. And in light, with, in light of immort eternal life, immortality of life, I mean, it's a blip on the radar, you know? No kidding. It's not even that, you know? And right. you know, when they saw Jesus, the carnal mind looked at Jesus being nailed to the cross. Mm. They thought, well, the, a good thing is over. Yes. You know, and he didn't, they didn't understand this was just the beginning. Right. Yes. <laughs> this was the beginning of, of life, eternal life for everyone. You know? Can you imagine the shock that the devil had on the day <laughs> of Pentecost when there was 3,000 little Jesuses? Oh my goodness. Wow. What are we going to do? The spirit was poured out and went into all of them. Now, yeah. how's he going to deal with all of this? He was trying to stamp them all out one by one. Yeah. Through Saul, you know? Yeah. But, but you know what? The thing is, God got in there. God, God got into human. Yes. And it's all over because. Oh. It's eternal life. How are you going to snuff that out? Yeah. You can't. Well, the darkness can't snuff light out. No. And, uh, and death can't 
snuff light, the yeah. light of God, you know? Yeah. And in God, there's no darkness at all, you know? And yeah. So we reign in life when we understand that Christ's life is our life. We reign in life and darkness has no place in us. Yep. And death can't communicate to us like it did before because we don't identify with this, this body of corruption, but we identify with the one who, who lives in us, you know, and who sits at the right hand of the Father. Yes. I love that scripture where he says, it's in John 14, 19, Jesus says, a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. Mm -hmm. At that day, hey, John, at God. that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. In mm -hmm. that day, you'll know. Mm -hmm. Only when the Holy Ghost comes can you know. Mm -hmm. I know what Jesus was talking about now. <laughs> he said, I was living in the fire. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, look at me. Slow down. About now. <laughs> we need to get you a better microphone that'll keep up with the fire. <laughs> it's glorious. It is. It's a glorious, glorious life that we have. Hallelujah. You know, words of life. Thank you for words of life. Yes. You know, Thank Jesus you. said, come unto me, all <laughs> you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Learn of me. How do you learn of Jesus? He didn't say learn about me. Mm. This is the same thing we were talking about in the beginning. That's personal. Mm. It's it's his life resonating in you. He says, come unto me and learn. To come is the beginning. It's not the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> come. Come. Come and see. Come and see. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you, know, you know how blessed we are to see, and that's what he said. Jesus didn't say you're blessed because of, of the possessions you have. No. Or the car you drive or no. whatever. He said you're blessed because of what you see and yeah. what you hear. And it's just so incredible, I'm telling you, to know where the true treasure is, you yeah. know, and the true riches. If you ever look up that word, the true riches and riches yeah. in scripture, you'll see where the true riches are and where they're not. Yeah. Yes. Right. And uh, it's it's incredible just to be able to hear this word and understand it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because you know, I mean, there was a time where what we're talking about now, I could have heard it, but not understood it. I thought exactly. you'd been, you guys are way off track. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, well, the word works in us, right? And word works on us to oh. get the wax out of our ears, you know, yeah, yeah. It takes the veil off and be, we begin to hear things we couldn't hear before and see things we couldn't see. Yeah. This last, last time when I was, sorry, last time when I was here, I was listening to Beulah and she said something and you've just said it again, Rick. And I've been pondering this and looking at this myself. Beulah said that the, um, when Joshua and Caleb, mm. they saw, they saw, they saw, whereas yeah. the other ones didn't didn't see. Now I've um, I've always looked at that from a point of view of having faith, and the others didn't have faith. That's the feely kind of thing. But then Beulah said, but they saw the promises, or they saw it, and then. Um, that sort of shook me a little bit. And you've just said the word sore again, Rick. And um, strangely enough, I had a dream. <laughs> and <laughs> it wasn't too sort of, but I, I, play, a, I play a sport and um, the top player in New Zealand was in this dream and he was talking to me. 
And he said, he, he said to me, he said, John, you have to actually see yourself winning, winning the game. You've got to see yourself doing this. And I'm going, and I'm thinking, but that's kind of still in the realm of seeing whether it's whether it's spiritual or whether it's just the sports psychology kind of things. And then I looked at the Tower of Babel and I saw, well, they were all of one accord there. And so long as they could speak the same language to one another, then they could see themselves building this Tower of Babel. And um, and it really got me thinking to what you were saying there, Rick, when, when you see this new revelation as opposed to the religious way of looking at things, but when you see it, it changes your life. And so I'm thinking it's this revelation, but unless we get that revelation from God to see it, mm. we're stuck. And yeah. I'm thinking, and I'm going, oh, well, um, oh, Lord, you better give me revelation. Um, the whole world stuck without seeing this revelation. So the word seeing was such a big thing, Mule, to you set me off on a course of looking at stuff. And <laughs> Rich just said it again. Right. Well, you know, let me, let me say this on that. You know, Jesus said, for judgment I've come into the world that those who are blind might see. Yeah. So yeah. that's the judgment, that the word became flesh, okay, so that we could see what God sees. Right. And, he, and, and, and it's just like, you know, that's amazing, even with that word judgment, you know, how we've defined judgment and how we've seen that. But Jesus defined it, what it was, you know. And he came to see he came. He came to uh, to open up the eyes of the blind, right? So, so that those who could not see would see, and to those who thought they could see would be made blind. Really, you know, and to, to really to take away that deception. But I was thinking about this. You know, uh, Ben Carson. We had a chance to meet him years ago at our coffee house here in Myrtle Beach. He showed up. But there's a whole story about him, you know, uh, as a brain surgeon. Right. Right. Yeah. But how his mother told him when he was a child, he says, Ben, he, she says, you need to see beyond what you can see. Right. And, yes. And, yeah. and, you know, and, and that's yeah. how he performed his first, actually, his real successful um, surgery of right. those twins that were joined. Right. Was that God was, I think it was God that showed him. You know, oh, yeah. to see beyond what others could see <clears throat> gave the knowledge to be able to do the, these things yeah you know but it's just amazing i find i find it very interesting when when it says um what we can see and then i'm asking myself the question well what do i not see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? and yeah. um and there's so many questions it's it's snowballed into this like I love this group because um, you guys see a whole lot of stuff that I still don't see. <laughs> you know? and, and that's why I'm here because I'm aware of, I'm aware of it. You talk about stuff and I'm going, Oh, what the heck, you know, <laughs> and I don't see it, but I want to see it. Amen. And, Glory to God. So that's why I get up at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> You know, see, John, awesome. the first place that I see this <clears throat> is in Abram. When yeah. Abram left Ur of the Chaldees and he took his nephew Lot. And God never told him to take Lot. Lot was a hindrance unto him. But when they started to prosper and there was fighting going on between the herdsmen of Lot's people and Abram's people, Abram said, hey, listen, we got to separate, okay? You, whichever way, and the thing is, Abram was the man. It was because of Abram that Lot was prosperous. But <clears throat> look at the, look at the um, attitude of Abram. He gave Lot his choice. He 
He was so humble. Yes, he did. And you know what? There's a scripture that says to allow God to choose your inheritance. Let him choose for you. He chooses right. We can make a big mistake. Amen. Amen. And you know, he let Lot choose. And Lot cho chose the land of Sodom. Okay. And so they separated. And it says in verse 12 of chapter 13 of Genesis, Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain. And he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Mm -hmm. There was something in him that pitched his tent toward that city. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord said to Abram, after, now this is it, very important. Mm -hmm. He said to him, after Lot was separated from him. Mm -hmm. And the word Lot means veil. When the veil was removed, the <laughs> Lord said unto Abram, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and mm. to thy seed forever. Mm. And that always brings me to Mark 11. Mark 11, 21, I believe it is. Let me turn there. But Mark 11. Mm. Jesus saith unto them, have the faith of God. Mm -hmm. This was in answer to the disciples marveling that the, the fig tree that he cursed had withered up. It had withered away. They were marveling. How could this be? You cursed it and it died. He's saying, if you can only see what God sees. Mm. Verily I say unto you that... Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, no. believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. No. What he's saying is, you've got to believe you got it before you can get it. Mm -hmm. You've got to know it's already yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that goes to Philemon 6 that says that our faith is made powerful mm -hmm. as we acknowledge, mm -hmm. and that word acknowledge is eyes wide open seeing. Mm. Yeah. Every good thing that you have in Christ Jesus. Mm. You got to see you have the whole ball of wax before you can make use of what you got. You got to see that you have it. If you can see it, you can have it. What's neat, the neat thing about this too is that is um, by f Hebrews talks about the faith all through there and how that they saw things that no one else saw, right? Yeah. It was by the faith they saw these things. Yeah. It was by the faith they understood. It says by the faith we understand that the worlds were framed by God. Understanding comes by the faith. Yeah. Seeing comes by the faith, which is not our belief that we try to muster up in ourselves. Faith is really, seeing. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. It's, so being it's, able to, it's being able to see what God sees. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm saying is the word works yeah. in us. The yeah. word of life. As we sit at the feet, as we're doing right now. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. Getting up at four o'clock in the morning. Of course, it's not four here, but yeah, I have an advantage of you a little bit. But yeah. uh, it shows your heart for the word. Absolutely. But as you said before the word, the word works in us. Yeah. 
to help us to see what well, God. I'll, I'll, I'll get raptured before you, Rick. What? I'll get raptured before you. I'll be up. <laughs> I'm coming. I was listening to Malcolm this morning, and he was giving a testimony about this friend of his that was born of missionaries in China. Mm -hmm. He came to the United States with a Chinese passport. He never got an American passport. He went to Canada. And uh, and then he got this horrible, incurable disease that attacked his nervous system. And he was in excruciating pain. And he was of that company of word of faith, you know, name it, claim it. And every day he'd say, Jesus, I have faith in you. I have faith in you. I have faith in you. Heal me, heal me. And, you know, he was trying to get a breakthrough, you know. And the thing is, you've got to understand that faith is praying from the breakthrough, <laughs> not trying to get a breakthrough. You've mm. already broke through. You already say, and you're just saying what you say. Not mm. trying to say it enough times to make it happen. <laughs> and so finally, he had it. He said, you know what? I don't believe in you, Jesus. I just don't believe in you. But no. would you please just take me and put me on your lap and mm. hug me <laughs> through this horrible thing? And he went into a deep sleep. And he woke up totally healed. <laughs> he said, I'm so when I was telling him, I believe in him, I believe in him. He didn't do nothing. Then when I say, I don't believe in him, he quit trying. God wants this thing to be real. See, he wants this to be real. And you know, it's just like I shared in the message uh, that I preached on Sunday morning on the way to church, and I shared it a little more in depth uh, at church about Thursday night when my husband was, I was just like, ah, oh. it was bad. It was really bad. And he had had surgery in, uh, in his mouth and it was so bad. And I called my son, Jimmy. And when he saw the state of his father, he was heartbroken. He just, the compassion of the Lord, you know, to, to, to have compassion is not like sympathy. Sympathy goes, oh, I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Compassion means you've got to compassionate. You've got to do something about it. So he entered into my husband's pain. He was feeling it. And he said to the Lord, and you know, I mean, I've never talked to the Lord like this, but you know what? Wherever you are at, you know, the Lord says, come boldly to the throne of grace. That means to come without reserved speech. Just say what's on your heart. Don't just, you know, put a mask on and say, eloquent words that you think the Lord wants to hear. Just <laughs> fill your guts, man. That's and that's what my son did. He Real. said, Father, your word says that an unfaithful friend is worse than having a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. And you said <laughs> that I could ask you whatsoever and you do it. Now, if you don't help my father, you are no good for me. You're useless to me. And I will just tell everybody how uh, unfaithful you are. <laughs> but if you do what you say, I'll sing your praises from the rooftop. Well, Maybe. I will tell you something. We went from the pit of hell <laughs> to the most magnificent place of healing. It was, I mean, minutes, just minutes. He went from 
agony out of his mind to Viola. I feel absolutely no pain. I'm all better now. <laughs> I see that. I feel absolutely no pain. And I feel wonderful. Yeah. I said, I've got to tell Jimmy. And I didn't know that this is what he prayed. Right. And I called him back and I said, he was bawling his eyes out. I mean, he had really gone into praying for his dad. His heart was broken to see his father the way he was. And I said, Jimmy, look at your dad. I said, dad, say hi to Jimmy. He said, Jimmy, I don't know what you prayed, but boy, I feel wonderful. It worked. I have, and Jimmy, then Jimmy told me what he prayed. I went, well, I, I wouldn't pray that, but hey, you know, mm -hmm. you were straight up. The Lord says, come boldly. <laughs> and he was so delighted. And you know something? All things work together for the good. I was delighted too. <laughs> to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. <laughs> Not only did he work a miracle in Jim's life? But he gave Jimmy a, a, an experience of God's faithfulness in the midst of the storm that now, you know, as he said to me, he says, Ma, I haven't killed the lion or the bear, but I got this. <laughs> and this is, a, this is something to hold on to. Yeah. And our life is filled with God's faithfulness. Absolutely. You know, in Psalm 103, <clears throat> David said, bless the Lord. You know, he had to talk to his own soul. Bless yeah. the Lord, oh, my soul. Come on. Bless the Lord. He's forgiven you all of your sin. Okay, Jim, I get it. I need to use it. I get so excited. <laughs> <laughs> remember, and, and as, as Malcolm has said, that word remember is yeah. don't just go and, oh yeah, I remember when. No, <laughs> remember is to bring the past into right now. Right? Mm -hmm. Bring the power of what happened back then into the right now. And that's what David did. I killed the lion. I killed the bear. Who would you, you no, uncircumcised Philistine? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he brought the power of God from those situations into his right now. And yeah. our lives are filled with right now moments where God saved us. And that's what Paul said. He said, who did deliver, who is delivering. And because I have a past faithfulness with God, his faithfulness to deliver me, and he's delivering me right now, I've got all the confidence in the world. And that's why Paul could say to the Philippians, I am fully persuaded that the good work he began in you he will complete it at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was confident. Why was he confident? Because he had seen, he had tasted of God's faithfulness to him. And the more, the more we go through trials and the more the Lord delivers us, I mean, we can say truly, as that all of our years since 1977, when we came uh, to receive Christ, okay, and and many of those years were total darkness compared to the light that we now have. Yeah. But even in our groping in the darkness, He was faithful, yeah. and He healed, and He delivered, and we can say. Uh, that all his promises have been yea and amen in our right. lives, and he has been nothing but faithful and good to us. Absolutely. Wow, what a wonderful testimony. And, yes. and you look great, Jim. You look oh, great. Yeah. 
The Lord heal me. I'm perfectly healed. Well, it's already, it's 1125. Uh, not that we're trying to be religious about it. <laughs> but I would like to give a few minutes for people who have, uh, who would like to comment on some things that we've been talking about as well. Uh, Janet or John, Anita. Do you have? I have something I can share. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, early on we were talking about Jesus coming to rescue us and how he always knew he'd come in a human body. Mm. And that's so true. You know, when you think about that, you think he's omniscient. He's all-knowing, always has been, always will be. Right. He's eternal. And so from eternity past, I guess you could say, he always knew that he was going to be coming and, and bringing the solution for us um, to, uh, you know, be crucified and, and rise again. And um, there are some people that don't believe that God is all-knowing. Some people don't believe Jesus is all-knowing, but he's always known that he was going to come as a human. And he was willing to do it, which boggles our mind. Uh, he saw all of this that's playing out through history. He saw it way ahead of time. Um, he's always known it. And it just took me to Psalm 147.5 that says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Mm -hmm. And even more than that, 1 John 3.20 says, um, if our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Yeah. And to me, I believe when it says he knows everything and he understands everything, it's everything. It's not some things, it's not most things, it's everything. So I just, I just believe the word. And um, so after the fall into sin in the Garden of Eden, God wasn't shocked with that. He wasn't surprised. He didn't say, oh, no, I got to bring a remedy you know what are we going to do he knew he saw it all play out beforehand because he's all-knowing and he's eternal and it just it makes me so grateful when i take communion i you know remember him in that 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 he's always known he's always known there was going to be um, a devil that would tempt us and that would come against us in our life he's always known that but he always knew that that he was going to be the solution for all of us yes, and it just shows you his unconditional love that's yeah. always been there yeah. and i think somebody quoted earlier that um you know that um the lamb was slain before the foundations of the world mm -hmm. and um so the answer has always been there throughout eternity and and now we're partakers of that we're receivers of of his answer and his solution so it just makes me more grateful even when i take communion i i reflect on that that he did it willingly for us right. so that was what was on my heart today awesome. and you prompted your discussion earlier prompted that so wow thank you did you have something or john janet did you have something like you know, as we grow in this grace and know his goodness and his faithfulness, we come to understand what he's done for us. I think the human mind, and that has to be changed. It has to come to know that God is greater than anything we could ever face. He brought us to know him. And we have to come to realize that and trust his faithfulness because he is good. And that learning to grow in that grace and know that is something that we all have to accomplish in our lives. And, or he persuades our heart to do that. Mm. I think, uh, mm. just going back, I think when, um, when my wife and I heard a word of faith, we learned of Mark 11, 23, 24, and we got a tax bill for $2,000. And we knew nothing except it said, if you say unto this mountain, be removed, cast into the sea, it shall be removed. And we knew nothing of grace or anything. Well, we, we, we laid hands on this $2,000 bill and we said, be removed in Jesus' name. We speak to you in that. And um, then we took our hands off this, this letter from the tax department. And then we just said, 
I don't know what I'm doing, Lord. But hallelujah, praise you, Lord. It's gone and blah, blah, blah. Well, we got a letter and it was gone. Um, and, and we were let off this $2,000 bill. Now, we knew absolutely nothing except there was a word. We just nothing. Mm-hmm. And now we're not sort of so much into word of faith anymore because um, because of it, it hurt us as well. But then I was thinking back of what Bueller was saying. I mean, about 10 years ago, we wanted to get a house and I was using word of faith. And I said, I claim this. And I spoke all of the all of the word of faith stuff. And I'm jumping up and down and hallelujah. And this is going to be good for the kids and everything. We didn't get the house. I just got worn out. <laughs> and But now coming into grace, you know, it's a... It's a heart thing. Yeah. It's a it's a heart thing, and it's and it it's taking me years, and it's still taking me years that it's it's in my heart. What do I believe rather than the word says this? And right. now it's it's in my heart, and I'm going, and I've still got questions about the heart, to be quite honest. But that's for another day. But as you say, Bueller, it's it's. It's growing in our faith, which is in our heart, right? And it's a relationship. And exactly. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and that's just lovely. So yeah. it's uh Beautiful it's work. coming, it's coming to know, no. it's coming to know him and his mm-hmm. faithfulness and his love toward us uh, that we can really trust him. It's mm-hmm. all about trusting him. Yes. You can't trust somebody you don't know. And the more we have an experiential knowledge of him, that comes into our situation and works things out. You know, it's just a, it's just a, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an, our experience. Mm. our experience with him mm. we can look back at our experience and and that's exactly all it is it's seeing his faithfulness up to right now and when you've got a long track record of seeing his faithfulness and the more trouble you have <laughs> the more you get to see his faithfulness but nobody <laughs> wants trouble <laughs> but that's where we get our um, experience, you know. You know what does it what does it say in uh, Romans five? It says being justified by being justified by grace. By faith. We have. Let's see here. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God mm. through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. We're all standing in grace. The whole world is standing in grace. But you've got to have eyes to see the grace you're standing in. And the eyes to see is faith, which is believing what God believes, okay? Mm-hmm. And so we have access into this grace, an entrance into this grace. And grace is, I always look at grace as twofold. One, grace is the divine influence mm-hmm. upon our heart reflected in our life. So grace is God influencing us mm-hmm. to see what he sees. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah. then the other aspect of grace is God's all sufficiency. Yeah. Okay. My grace is sufficient for thee, mm-hmm. for my strength is made strength, perfect. perfect. Strength, in your yeah. Ability, strength. Yeah. So we need God's grace to influence our hearts to see what He sees, that we can have access to this superabundance of mm-hmm. His ability in yeah. our life. Very good. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then it says, uh, and not only so, we glory in tribulations. Glory. 
Now, how can you glory in tribulations unless you know that his all sufficiency is going to be there for you in the midst of your trial? Evidence of your when you get through that, you've just got another uh, thing that you can chalk up to God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So it's a life of experiencing. Experience, yeah. It's delivering us yeah. in every situation. Mm. And you know, when I look at that scripture in uh, Mark 11, where he says, you know, have the faith of God. You know, you can say unto this mountain, be cast into the sea. I never think of physical things. I never think of, you know, getting stuck. You know what I mean? It's always, I'm always looking at it as a conquering whatever's coming against me, living in that divine place of security that God has provided for me in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my landing space. Jesus Christ is my escape. Like I said last week, that um, there's no temptation taking you that's not common unto all men. And with the temptation, the Lord will provide a way of escape. <laughs> and that is, you know, it's not like he's saying you're going to get out of the situation, but I'm mm. going to give you an escape in the situation. I love it. Yeah. So, I mean, you can have the storms of life bombarding you mm. and then he provides this way of escape where now nothing has changed externally, but now your consciousness is that of dwelling in the kingdom. I'm dwelling in the kingdom of God. Mm. And the fruit of that is peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So here I am that's in faith. peace and joy in the midst of the storm. That's faith. And that's what causes people's heads to go tilt when mm. they see you respond in such a positive way. Whatever they're on, I want some of it. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're going to close this out. John, could you close this out it, uh, in prayer? Yeah. Thank you. Father, we, we thank you, firstly, that you love us, Lord. Yes, it's, Lord. All, it's all because you love us that you came and, and died for us, Lord. And we just, we thank you for that. We thank the thank you that you have always been faithful to us lord yes. lord even like jim and buell and 76 lord god and all these years you have never taken your hand off each one of us father you remain faithful lord even when we have not been faithful mm -hmm. and so we just we just praise you we lift you up we declare you as lord and we thank you for this meeting lord and as we go our separate ways father we thank you that you are with us and yeah. that you care for us and you know our very thoughts, Lord, and you're looking after all of our families, and we can rely and trust on you, a God of grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Good I just time. want to say it's Jan's birthday today. Oh. <laughs> Happy oh. birthday. It's my son, Happy birthday. Jim's birthday today. Happy too. birthday to <laughs> you. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. Happy <laughs> birthday, dear Jan. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. And many, many more. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I just, I just see in the clock there, I just saw it now, it's 20 to 12. Mm -hmm. Correct. You've had right. a time change. You've had a time change, I think. Yes, we did. Yes. Yeah. In Look. March. Oh, yeah, we did in March. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> sure did. So you still start at 10 6 o'clock. 10 o'clock our time. 10 o'clock this time now. 10, 10 o'clock, right, because I'm, I'm a bit late now, you see, so. Um, oh, gotcha. I thought you just woke up too late. <laughs> <laughs> quite possible, quite possible. Thank you very much. We, we love having you on this. Oh, uh, yeah. It's such a blessing, and not just with us here, but, you know, when we post this, wherever it goes out. It's such a blessing. I'll tell you what, I love these Zoom meetings. They're awesome. I enjoy your Facebook, Rick. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep posting. I get a little preachy sometimes, but I can't help it. I just can't help it. I got to tell.
Okay, love you guys. Love, love you too. Love you too. Wonderful week.